Hey, this is Amaranth, and today I'd like to take you through two and a half of the tracks from The Body is a Prison, my EP on Detroit Underground. So it ended up being two and a half tracks because I just ended up gluing a bunch of tracks together in one project, and it's it's massive by my standards. It's It just is really long. There's a hundred and something tracks. It just Yes, it was a bad time. I do not recommend doing it like this, but yes, that is how it is. Anyway, I'll play the tracks just so you know what's going on. Not from there, from the start would be wonderful.
Cool. All right. So the origins of this track, um, as far as I can remember, it came from a, a probably two different places. So the first thing that I started with, I was playing around with my uh, Waldorf Blofeld synthesizer, and I I made this sort of organ up. I'll see if I can find it. Ah, here it here it is. Uh, yeah, so I made this up, and. I thought it was quite good. Good enough that I'd want to try writing it out on the piano. So I ended up with, I think it's this loop. Let's see. Lovely lot of side chaining on there. Yeah, so that loop ended up forming the basis for the entire track. Even Phantom Prototype, all the pianos are based on that loop. They're just kind of alternate versions of that same progression. Um, the other origin of this track, uh, when I started writing this, my friends dared me to make an entire track out of samples from Serial Experiments Lane. And it was kind of timely because I was playing through the Serial Experiments Lane PlayStation game at the time. And uh, if you've played through Serial Experiments Lane on PlayStation, you probably noticed that the audio is absolutely abysmal. It is shit. It is awful. Um, my understanding of why it is like that is because they, they put so much effort into the video rendering, which is pretty awful anyway, um, that there was no space left on the disc to actually do decent audio. So any music is pretty shit. Um, and the only other things you're left with are like the menu sounds. So what I did, oh God, I don't even know if I could find them now, um, is I took the menu sound and I just kind of pitched it all around the place. So... Uh, I think that's pitched down. So I think this was the original sound. Yeah. So there was that. And then I also have the Lane Bootleg CD. And the Bootleg CD has a whole bunch of it has a whole bunch of MP3s on it. Um really badly encoded MP3s. And it also has like a few little Windows games which if you like look through the files and stuff, um, there's just a whole bunch of sound effects that were, I think, ripped straight from the TV show. So, like, all these little things, little, little beepy, splashy things from, uh, if you've seen the show, Lane's, like, hacker cave room where the floor is covered in water. Yeah, Lane, Lane is one of my favourite things on the planet. So, yeah, now you know. Um, yeah, so I just took a whole bunch of those and mushed them all up and created most of the, well, most of the sound design in this track is Lane. Also on the tangent of uh, Serial Experiments Lane PlayStation game, um, there was a quote in there that I thought was quite nice. So here is a Morse code track. I made that quote into Morse code. So the quote is, things are born when you build them and when they are destroyed, they transform into something else, something completely new. And I thought that quote is quite applicable to Hyperglitch. We destroy things and we make new things out of them. And... I don't know, I think it was just me being sappy at the time, but I thought, oh, maybe maybe I'll just kind of like hide that in the track by uh, making Morse code out of it. So 
So if you listen really closely in the intro, you'll be able to hear that. But as as you can see at like negative 38, it's, it's fairly quiet. It's more of a just a moody ambient thing that's there. I think it's at the end as well. Oh yeah, so in the, the transition between anamnesis and amnesia, there's a bit of Morse code in the, uh, where everyone kind of dies. Oh look at that, it's the wrong time. Yeah, don't listen too hard for that. Yeah, so let's get on to each section. And what makes each section, each section. So, fandom prototype. It is pretty much me trying to create an intro, but then getting stuck into using grain spec. And grain spec is heaps of fun if you've never used it. It's just, you chuck a sample in there and start playing with it and you end up with some wild stuff. Highly recommended. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Do check it out. Um, yeah, so ambient section into grain spec. Um, I was pretty inspired by a lot of what Sunk was doing at the time. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll try and do something like that. Some sort of uh, moody, ambient beats thing. So ended up with a heap of layers of just droning and pulses. So, like this. Pulses broken up with piano hits. And nice little uh, crispies, as I've named them. I actually have no idea how I've made those, um, but they, they look fairly distorted and offset. So yes, crispies. Um, this free time section, I had started writing this piano stuff and... I think what I just tried to do was try and fit like some sort of drum beat to to that piano. So I ended up with these 808s and these uh, nice vaporism, crispy claps, um, nice bit of blood splatter. My, my, I love layering blood splatters under snares and things. Just that extra texture. Nice. Um, yeah, so in between each piano hit, I tried to connect them together using sound design. So here you can see I've used some scratchy resampling to connect the hits together. in time with the piano. All right, the little segue into um, the hyper glitch section, or, you know, the drop of um, Fanda Prototype, that is a direct rip from Serial Experiments Lane. There, there's a, a part, I forget which episode it's in, she walks into her room through the water, her uh, computers flick on, and I'm like, yeah, I, I, I want that. I want that to be the intro into my, uh, my hyper glitch section. So yeah, just this little sample. Yeah. All right, the hyper glitch section. As far as I can remember, I th this section all came after I'd done most of anamnesis. So all uh, all of this. This stuff, which is the resampling and piecing together to make the beat. Um, I had taken that and chucked it into grain spec. 
and just tried to see what would happen. And whatever happened must have been good because I put a beat to it and it I think it sounded okay. So yeah, this this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> So the hyperglitch section in this track is not particularly difficult. It's it's not particularly complex or anything. There's there's not a lot of playing around with time or anything. Um, most of it is there to accommodate a piano, a, a bunch of piano that I wrote up here. Let's see, so we can actually see it. Um, which sounds like this. If we start from the start, it would be helpful. Actually, this, this piano was a bit of an, ex an accident. Um, I think I just chucked like a grain. Oh, I'd done like a, a shimmer sort of sounding reverb. Um, and I accidentally automated it over the top. And it just, it sounded really good, honestly. That pitched up reverb to me. Just, yeah. So I, I just spammed it throughout this entire section. And the hyper glitch, the drums and stuff are just there to accommodate whatever is going on the piano. So if you listen, the the drums and stuff will just accent whatever's going on the piano. <laughs> Yeah, so like this little section here where there's a big gap, there is there's purposely nothing really there just because I wanted the I wanted the tail of the 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 shimmery piano reverb to stand out because it's I don't know, I just I like it. It's a nice moment. And yeah, there's a few of those moments throughout here and I just I just try to highlight them by not hyper glitching things, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> But um, open areas like that give you like a nice opportunity to, at the end of those sections, do nice little glitchy fills. So this little OTT whatever. It's a nice little signifier to kind of tell the listener that, you know, you, you're going into something a little bit harsher after it. Yeah, so fairly straightforward in this section. I don't think there's really any anything complex going on. Um, the, well, grain spec has been flattened, but there would have been a fair bit of speed automation and just other bits and pieces in there. If you've ever used grain spec, it's really fun to automate and get new sounds out of, stretching and contracting the samples that you've thrown in. Um, yeah, flattened so that it was easier to move around. All right. So on to anamnesis. I, I really just wanted to highlight um, right at the start of the track, this piano loop that I'd made. I think it's this one. Or actually, no, not highlight it. I wanted to introduce it. Um, because what this track does is it ramps up over time. Each section as you go along gets slightly more complicated and corrupted to the point where it just cuts out altogether and then goes on with a new section. So I wanted to kind of start off soft. So we start off with the piano loop, this piano loop, but just simplified to the the first chords of each what is it? Each bar 
So, this. Just something nice and, I don't know, serene before you uh, start adding additional madness. But I thought those chords in themselves were a little bit boring. So I added this synth layer, which does a little bit of glitching just to add a bit of texture. But yeah, it just accompanies the chords and yeah, just adds interest. And uh, yeah, some pad stuff. So nothing complicated, just pretty, pretty things, pretty pianos. We all like pretty pianos. It's a staple of hyperglitch. Okay. So one of the things I really wanted to do with anamnesis, oh, anamnesis, by the way, means recollection of the past. It's, yeah, it kind of plays into the writing of this track, which I'll get onto later. Um, cut that shit. It's stupid. One of the things I wanted to do with this track was to write a beat that evolves over time, which means not repeating yourself. So what I ended up doing is, I mean, after like the piano loop just plays through, it doesn't do anything special. I, underneath that, I just, I'd start off with four bars or so. So I'd, I'd loop a section and write, arrange some drums and glitches and stuff to accompany the piano. So yeah, a lot of the, the glitchy stuff just kind of is on beat. It, um, it accentuates the beat. So no, no wild shit yet. Not at all. It also highlights some of the, uh, the lane, um, samples. Cause I think these are just, um, yeah, they're not even warped. They're just the plain straight up samples. So yeah, once I'd write four bars, I would duplicate that out and start modifying it. Or I'd delete a whole bunch of the glitches and just start writing new glitches. And then as I'd find glitches that needed different patterns from like the kick and the snare, I would just accommodate that, change time a little bit. Yeah, so then I'd take those bars and duplicate them out here. And then just the same process, modify it. And over time, add some new things. Evolve, like just to evolve the beat over time. I think here I've started adding, I'd made a bunch of raw data samples from the Lane Bootleg CD. Um, yeah, because it wasn't just a CD, it was a data CD. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna chuck a whole bunch of the files on here into Audacity and see what I can come up with. And, um, yeah, some of, some of the stuff was pretty good. Um, but I thought, you know, that it kind of, uh, ties in with my, uh, lane samples technically thing. I don't know. Yeah. Raw data, raw data samples are fun sometimes. They, they can also like kill your ears if you're not careful. Um, yeah. So be careful. Um, if, if you don't know how to do the uh, raw data sampling. Um, there, there are tutorials everywhere on YouTube. You just Audacity raw data. Um, yeah, so over time, just adding additional little things to evolve the beat. And as I got to the third section, bring in a new kick drum, just add intensity. I think the, f the first kick drum is quite wimpy. 
Oh, yeah, it's just a little splattery thing. Um, and then... Oh, yeah, yeah, shit. That, that is fairly more intense. It's splattery and weird and probably something I resampled myself because it sounds awful. But in context, it's okay. So, yeah, things are allowed to sound awful if they sound okay in context. I think that that is a rule for all of music. Things are allowed to sound shitty by themselves, but yeah, together. If they sound good, they are good. Yep, yeah, so as I progressed through the section, I just started adding more of these raw data samples. I think I colored them in yellow so I could find them. Um, and to, um, so to bring out that more raw... <laughs> That more raw sound, I had, I think I just made a really shitty device in Max. Oh my god, I'm never going to find it. Uh, I will find it, I promise you. I think it might be this one, actually. Uh, it's just a, a shitty distortion device that does different kinds of distortion. Like, nothing too special, but... Um, Really harsh sounding stuff that kind of suited the the raw data sound. So I used that a lot. Um, I think there was there was another one somewhere. I'm pretty sure. Um, just the, the cos um, algorithm distortion. Anyway, yes, there, there's um distortion over groups of the glitches to, or over entire sections of glitches just to. Make them sound really shitty. And make the make the track feel like it's breaking apart to the point that it gave me a free opportunity to change the direction of where the track was going. So if we listen. This is where it starts to break apart. Oh, another note, uh, any neuro that I'd used in this track is not there to be a bass. It's more there just to be a texture, uh, which I kind of regret now because I feel like there was a, a lot of opportunity to do some cool neuro stuff. But, I mean, as, as it is, it, it works. <laughs> Mo most of the heavy lifting is done by just a a sub, a simple operator sub with some saturation on it. Anyway, the B section of the track where it goes quiet and there are 808s and stuff and there are voices, which um, kind of ran with my lane theme because if you've if you played the lane PlayStation game, you'll know it's it's about mental illness pretty much and shit goes down and there are voices and things. So I thought, yeah, I'm just going to use some voices that I have on my hard drive from the past, which, yes, the, um, the title of the track, Anamnesis, Memories from the Past. So um, most of this section, apart from being based around that same piano loop, this one. Ugh. Over here. Oh, well, that same piano loop, but pitched up and probably on beats mode. Warp? Yep. Um, yeah, it was based around these voices. So these are legit voices from my past. They're from, okay, history time. Um, back when MP3 players first came out, I got a little Eye River. Um, mp3 player i think it was like it had one gigabyte of memory so you could hold like you know a handful of tracks um but one really cool thing about it that i i don't think i realized how cool it was later until later was um the fact that you could record sounds on it and when you're like an early teen ager and you have a whole group of friends and you can record yourselves you know just sh shit gets wild you just turn into the stupidest people on the planet. And um, even better, um, 
the, this MP3 player, you could slow down and speed up the recording. So that was just endlessly funny to, you know, teenage brain hearing yourself as a chipmunk or, you know, that kind of stuff. So this recording, um, oh, even more history actually, actually. So this recording was taken from an answering machine. And I don't know how many people know about answering machines, but um, answering machine was like pre-voicemail voicemail. So it was attached to the landline telephone and it had a tiny little like cassette tape in it and it would engage after the phone had rung so many times and it would play a pre-recorded sample saying, you know, hey, you've reached Amaranth, please leave a message or whatever. Um, And then it would record your message onto this little cassette tape. And so my friends had left me a message at one time because I I have friends, I swear. Um, Although I, I do not talk to these people anymore. So hi, Kieran Ellie, if you are watching this, I, I do appreciate you and I appreciate you lending your voices to this recording or to this track. Uh, yeah, so I, um, my friends left me a message and I recorded it on my little iRiver MP3 player. So that is this. Whoa, this is pitched down. Hi, um, Thompson, it's, um, Oh, yeah, there was this really novel thing where you could have two people call you at once on the landline telephone and, yeah, that that's what had happened there. Anyway, so I, I took a recording of them and it I have heaps of those shitty little recordings on my hard drive from, like, 20 years ago. So <laughs> I thought, you know, maybe it's about time I used it. So, I mean, I, I did originally have grand plans for um, putting the get together the voices in such a way that made sense. But I think in the end, I kind of just rushed through it and mushed them all together. And if it sounded good, I'm like, yeah, it can just stay like that. Honestly, I think I've just used like all warp modes on this. Like th- there's nothing really difficult going on. I think there was like a telephone filter oh, on the group to make it actually sound like a telephone, even though it sounded like a telephone to begin with. I don't know. Um, yeah. Voices. Um, a lot of that was mostly to do with the fact that I didn't actually know what to do with this section. So I just kind of shoved things together until they worked. I mean, all of the drums and stuff were done using the same method as the previous section in Anamnesis. So the, you know, write write a couple of bars, duplicate it out, and then modify it. But I think to even lesser extent here, because I, I think I wanted it to be a little bit more stable, even though I didn't know what I wanted here. So yeah, th- this whole this whole B section is just a mishmash of me not knowing what to do and shoving things together. And hopefully it worked. Oh yes, the important thing about this section was I, I started really kind of utilizing the um, the, the samples from the lane PlayStation game, just the menu sound, which is quite musical and nice as opposed to the rest of the game. It's a nice chord to, you know, layer and chop up. So yeah, that made my sister. Most of the identity of this section, I think. (laughs) 
I suspect that most of the um, the glitches in this section, apart from just being the straight up lane samples again, um, were probably just resampling this entire section and arranging them in such a way that made musical sense. Um, don't take my word on that. I wrote this two years ago. I don't really know. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, here's some more. Oh, I don't even know what this is. I don't even know how this was made. Oh, hang on. Nope. I, there's a clue in the name. This was the original, the original loop at the start of Anamnesis, um, just rendered out and chopped up. That's, that's all that is. All this, uh, yellowy section. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I have this, uh, bad habit of trying to make climaxes out of sections for no particular good reason. I think if you listen to any of my tracks, I'll have some big sweep up somewhere. I promise I'm trying to break that habit. But um, yeah, I, because I honestly didn't know what to do th with this section, I'm like, yeah, I'll just build it up and then see where it goes. So we ended up with this. Oh, if I... Intensifying with more hats. This transition was a bit of fun writing. Um, I think it was about the time the Max for Cats put out this Max device, and I don't think I'll ever be able to find it now. Okay, I have found it. So the fun bit in this transition section is actually this this chain on all the melodic parts of the track, except the voices. Um, so what it is, actually, I will play it. So it's basically a shitty resonant reverb that pitches down over time. And that's literally just this, I don't know why I've chucked a bunch of LFOs on Corpus, but here we are. Um, corpus over time, I've set on pipe mode, just pitching down over time, pitching down over time. And that goes into a filter to cut off the highs to make it seem like it's getting further away. And then that's into a reverb that the dry wet goes up over time. Oh, yep. There it is. It's so tiny. There we go. Right there. Yeah, so that gives the whole character of the transition section. And it just... It's kind of sad, I think. It makes me feel sad when I listen to it. It's like it, it's going away. That memory is going away. Which is probably good because I don't need to remember people from that far ago. Um, the immediate problem after this was I had no idea what to do next. The original idea was um, to, <laughs> to literally take the entire song and resample it into a new section. But at this point, I didn't really know, like, was the track too long? Was it short enough? Was this, this enough material to like go on with? So I, 
I did that, I resampled the track and started writing here. So we ended up with this section. I feel is pretty solid it's just the track resampled in different ways and glued together I from listening to that it sounds like I've used scratchy just on the scrub mode um there's oh, what's this <sighs> oh possibly uh using Ableton glitching techniques so where you yeah use the different warp modes and change the tempo and all sorts of things. I think that's what's happened there. And then what's, oh, um, that's simpler. The uh, simpler uh, using the warp modes and just playing samples or oh, chopped bits of a resample section. <laughs> Which I suppose in itself is, it's a quite handy tool to have um, when you're stuck for ideas, um, yeah, it's good for layering because you end up with a lot of like really samey sounds, especially if you have it on like complex mode, you get that like alias, alias spectral sound. Um, from a lot of your samples. So yeah, it's really good to, when you're using something that does sound so characteristic the same to layer it up with other different kinds of resampled material just so you have that different the different textures going on um yes pro tip not that i'm a pro i i just i try hard <laughs> uh yeah so yeah i'd written this how how long is that like 30 seconds intending for that to continue on or I mean, at the same time, it kind of gave me the leeway to go into a new section. But in the end, I honestly did not know what to do. And for the longest time, the track just kind of ended here. Oop. On that little sweep up there. And it was just going to go straight into, um, uh, what is it? The title track, Body is a Prison. Because in my head, that kind of worked well. But then... I just started playing with distortion and I ended up with the big distortion tail here. Which I, I was writing another track at the time, which was kind of similar to one of uh, Woolg's tracks uh, where he, he plays with the tempo and it affects a lot of the stuff in the track. Um, a lot of the like warp modes and any sort of modulation type devices, um, and delays. Um, I ended up just kind of gluing the start of this resampled section to that track. And that is Amnesia and it's not much of a track and I don't think I'll, I'll ever, um, break it down in any capacity because it's just like an 808 and a few piano chords and I think they are the same piano chords as uh, the ones used entirely throughout this track. So yeah that is the track. There's a lot of it but at the same time not really. It was just a lot of uh, me not knowing what to do and <laughs> trying to put things together in a way that made sense. But then also like, because I had these, um, these things that I really wanted to work with, like this piano loop and the, uh, the lane samples and the, um, uh, I suppose the recordings here, um, like it, it kind of narrowed down my options in like what I was going to do, but then at the same time, no, not really. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the track. It's large. Um, yeah, any, any devices that I used, um, that were applicable to this, uh, grain spec, scratchy, things like that. I'll just link in the de description below. 
Um, yeah, I'll also link the EP in the description. Uh, the oh, the sound of the EP it will be slightly different to what was played in here, only because it was mastered by Woolg, um, who. Yes, it, it is so nice to have a different set of ears on your music to uh, master it when you've been working on something for so long. Well, that's my opinion anyway. Um, yeah, so um, the the EP version will sound different to this, so don't stress too much about that. Not that you will, but sure. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, so this, this has been my walkthrough, my incredibly fragmented and uh, all over the place walkthrough of... Two and a half of my tracks of the EP. Um, if you made it this far, thank you so much. If you have any questions, ask them. Ask them down below in the comments or, I don't know, contact me on Discord or something. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs>